Okay, so it is time to load up some more 6.5 Grendel. We've got a definite purpose behind this one here because I've been invited on a hog hunt next month down in Texas. And 6.5 Grendel is one of the guns I want to take with me. And the bullet I've chosen is the 129 grain Nosler AccuBond Long Range. This is just an absolute butt kicking bullet. Ballistic coefficient of 561, so this thing really likes to really likes to fly. And they expand all the way down to 1300 feet per second. So this is this is just a, a really good bullet for the Grendel, and everything I read about it is good. So this is what I'm planning to use. It's supposed to hold together, maximum weight retention, and there's uh yeah, a lot of people out there just reporting huge success with this bullet and I was able to, I've got 400 of them so I've got a bunch of them to play with and it seems like the right choice for my hunt. I've picked out four powders and the biggest factor behind my choice of these four powders is the amount that I have on hand. I've got a bunch of these four powders on hand so I know I'm not going to run out if we end up needing to uh, you know take a lot of shots before we get things dialed in I don't want to run out of powder. So this is going to be several videos. Today's video, I want to test a couple extruded powders. The first is AR comp. I've got a ton of AR comp on hand and this has proven to be a really good shooter in my gun with 123 grain bullets. So it deserves a try here with the 129 grainer. And the other is IMR 4166. I haven't shot this powder a lot, but I've got a big jug of it. So I've got plenty of it. The other thing that I uh, find interesting about this powder is on Nosler's load data, they show this as the most accurate powder they tested. It's not going to get us the highest velocity, but I've got a big 24 inch barrel. If we need to give up a little bit of velocity, that's that's not a huge deal. So we're going to test IMR 4166 and see if, uh, if Nosler is correct about it being accurate. That's going to be today's video is those two powders. The next video, I want to test out a couple of uh, spherical and flake powders. Uh, the first is Ramshot TAC and the other is Hodgson CFE 223. I've got plenty of these on hand. CFE 223 is definitely going to give us the best uh, velocity. This is the one, you know, this is one of the powders that everybody can really get uh, going smoking fast. I mean, we could probably hit 2,600 feet per second with CFE 223. And Ramshot Tax, not all that far behind it. It's, it's, it would be able to uh, get us some really good velocity. So, to be honest, one of these two is probably going to end up being the choice in the end, unless they just don't shoot nearly as well as uh, AR comp and 4166. AR comp has given me supply, surprisingly good velocity with the 123 grain bullets. So it, it, might, uh, it might surprise us here. The other thing, so my Grendel upper, I've had this uh, odd mount base and my six to 24 vortex on it for quite a while now. I'm going to be switching this out for the hunt. I picked up, stay there. I picked up one of these ATN X sights. This is a big freaking honking thing that uh, it's basically a camera with a reticle. It's uh, and it can do night with the IR illumination. So, this is what I'm actually going to use for the hunt. We might be trying some night hunting, so this will be uh, a whole lot better for that. And uh, it'll also allow me to record, you know, it, it records and stuff. So once we get a load picked out and worked up with this scope, then I'm going to be swapping this guy onto the gun and probably doing some videos on the channel on the ATN X Site 2. Yeah, ATN X Site 2 HD. So that'll be coming and that'll be on this gun for the trip. So that's the basic plan right now. I just went ahead and cleaned this guy. So the gun and upper and everything is uh, 
nice and clean and ready for testing with the new bullet. So uh, what else didn't I cover? Those are our powders. These, these are next time. So we'll just go ahead and take them off the table. Uh, primers for now, I'm going to be using uh, the CCI BR4s. As far as brass goes, got my same batch of Hornady brass that we've been using for uh, previous videos here on the channel. Uh, it's fully prepped. I sized it, uh, trimmed it, deburred and chamfered the case mouth and primed it earlier. So we're ready for powder and bullets. This is going to be pretty quick and we'll be out on the range. I'm really interested to see how this bullet's going to fly out of my gun. I'm hoping it's going to be good. And if it's not good, we need to make a change really quick and find something else. But everybody is reporting success with this bullet, so my hopes are very high. So let me get resituated. We'll start slinging some powder. I forgot to talk about load data. Yeah, crap. I'm kind of losing my mind here. Um, the load data for 4166, we're just going to follow what Nosler had. 24 to 26 grains. We're going to go in half grain increments and we'll shoot the whole range. So 24 to 26 in half grain increments. For overall length, I'm going to stick with 2.260. My gun can go, or my magazines can go a little bit longer than that. I can usually squeeze in almost 2.270, but since this is a hunt and load, I definitely don't want any function issues that are related to the magazine interference. So we're going to stick with 2.260. I did check earlier uh, to see where this bullet hit the lands and it was 2.422. So we're going to be 160 thousandths off the lands with this bullet with our 2.260 overall length. So no worries there. Sticking with magazine length and yep, I'm R4166, 24 to 26. As far as AR comp goes, with the 123s, I've been shooting 28 grains, but of course this is a bigger bowler going to, uh, this is a bigger bullet. It's going to be deeper into the case. So I want to back off that a little bit. I want to shoot from 25.5 up to 27.1 and we'll do it in four tenths of a grain increments and see what that gets us. With the 4166, this is a very large granuled extruded powder. Like they're huge. And Nosler stopped at 100% case capacity. 26 grains they list as 100% load density. So, and I, I've read that this powder doesn't necessarily like to be compressed, but we've done some compressed loads with AR comp a little bit with the 123 grain bullets and it seems to tolerate it okay and shoot well. So 27.1 is going to be a little bit compressed, but not all that much. So we'll just have to, we'll just have to see how it goes. And speaking of seeing how it goes now, let me get, uh, let me get some powder flowing. So I've made it to our last five charges of IMR 4166. These bullets are seating really nicely. Nothing weird going on. It's all gone according to plan. trying to settle the powder as much as possible with some taps and what I've been doing is some rounds whenever I go to seed them they are giving a little bit of crunchiness going on so I'll try and seed it like halfway then maybe tap it around just to get the powder around the boat tail maybe And then I can usually see it the rest of the way without any more crunchiness going on. And I've been turning them 90 degrees and seating again just to try to, you know, get consistent seating depth as much as I can. Hasn't been much creep on this one, 2.263. They've all kind of stayed in that general, in that general length within a few thousandths of 
2.260. So no issues so far. I'm going to skip over pretty much all of the loading here. Not a whole lot interesting going on or abnormal. Like I said, these, uh, these bullets are seating really nicely. Just a little bit slow. Try not to crush this powder. Like I said, this IMR 4166 are, is a pretty big granule extruded powder. So I'll check in with you guys at least one more time here before we hit the range, but we should be out there in no time. So I'm just finishing up this last charge of AR comp. Everything's kind of continued to go along in a boring fashion. No surprises, nothing to worry about. This highest charge of AR comp really isn't crunching quite as hard as I thought it might. So I might be able to squeeze a couple more tenths in there if I decided I wanted to, but I don't know. We'll see what sort of velocity we get out of these. So there we are, 50 rounds. Plus, uh, I loaded up 15 ciders and fouling shots as well because I just cleaned my gun. So I want to get it fouled back up, get some of this, uh, some of this bullet and powder fouling up the barrel before we start shooting groups. So, yep, let's get the heck out there. Okay, it is time to see how these 129s are going to fly in my 6.5 Grendel. We are at 100 yards. If you guys are new and haven't seen my Grendel before, this is a 24 inch Brownells barrel. I've got my Silencer Co. Omega suppressor on. Got my Magneto Speed Chronograph on. This is a Gibbs side charging upper, Midwest Industries uh, handguard, GG and G bipod, a uh, 6 to 24 Vortex PST scope. And that's about it. The last Grendel video, we had some functioning issues that I'm pretty sure were related to the mag. I'm switching back to my known good magazine that I've shot a bunch. This is an Elander, uh, I think it's a 24, 20 or 24 rounder, I don't know. It's, it's the big Elander. So I don't expect to have any issues. I think that 10 round mag we were shooting in the last video was the source of the issues. We are going to start off with IMR 4166, and our first charge is 24 grains. Let's see how they shoot. Okay, that's not a spectacular start, but it's not terrible either. Solidly in the mediocre category. So let's move over to 24.5 grains. Okay, next is 25 grains. Twenty five point five. Okay, last up with forty one sixty six is twenty six grains. Okay, a bit of a disappointing start here with uh, IMR 4166. So let's readjust the target and move over to AR comp. Okay, so I didn't mention it before, but there weren't any pressure signs. All the brass looked fine with IMR 4166. It's what we expected, right? Uh, 
we were working off of published data and we knew the velocities were going to be low. So, yep, no, no pressure signs to speak of. Now, with AR Comp, we're starting off with 25.5 grains. I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful. We're not working for published data. We're on our own. So, I'll have to keep a much closer look at the, at the brass. So, let's get started. 25.5 grains is first. Okay, brass looked okay on that one. So moving on to 25.9. Brass looks okay. Group's a little bit disappointing here. I'm hoping this isn't a sign that my gun just doesn't agree very well with this bullet. I don't know. All right, 26.3 grains is next. All right, the loads are starting to get hot. Primer's looking nice and flat. I think we'll be able to finish this string out, but this is definitely, uh, Approaching max, definitely. So 26.7 is next. Okay, last up, 27.1. All right, save the best group for last. Okay, so the brass looks hot, but still looks good. So let's get into the bench and talk things out. Okay, first things first. I promised to have that stupid buffer spring greased before the next video. Man, I started editing the footage and it's like, oh my God, that is so annoying. So annoying. My microphone was on my chest right beside the you know, the buffer tube, so that buffer spring just made all sorts of crazy noise. But I need to grease it up and get it quieted down a little bit. The other problem, like, this video sucks. Going through stuff, trying to edit it, and man, it's just, it's dull. I've got no jokes. It's not very interesting. And now the groups are kind of crap. I mean, they're not awful. They're not awful at all. But we only had one group under an inch and it was our highest charge of AR comp 2521 was the velocity which is pretty darn good and our group was 0 0.9 inches if there was one group that it's nice to have it be a good one that's good because if things go really bad with our next couple powders then we can always fall back and just shoot AR comp like I said, so far in my gun, it's been my favorite powder, but yeah, I don't know. So all the way from 25.9 up to 27.1, it was 1.22, 1.08, 1.21, and then the one that was just under an inch. So it's, it's consistent. It's just not quite as tight as I would like, you know, I just like to see, you know, under an inch. I know the gun can do it. I know the gun can do it. Now, 4166. It's velocity, we only got up to 2358, which we were kind of expecting, right? We, we knew. So its only hope was to shoot lights out crazy good. It did not shoot lights out crazy good. It shot bad. Had a 2.11 inch group. That was the biggest group of the day. And its best group was this 1.16 incher. So just kind of bad all around. That is, uh, that's enough 4166. So AR comp, eh, you know, 
hopefully we don't have to fall back to this, but if we have to, that's not the worst thing in the world. I guess that's the only good thing to come out of this video. I'm worried about our bullet, you know, maybe it's just not going to shoot in my gun. I don't know. So next up is going to be, uh, nope, not that. It's going to be, here they are. Yeah, CFE 223 and TAC is going to be the next video. That'll be coming really soon. If these are off, also not very good at all, then we may have to fall back to ones where I'm, I've only got a pound or two. The Lever Evolution, I've heard a lot of good things about it. We could give it a shot. I've got some accurate 2520, which I've read good things about. We could give that a shot. Winchester 748, 8208 XBR. We've had some success with this powder in my gun. So that might not be another bad option. So, you know, we got options we can try, but I'm hoping CFE 223 or TAC will get the job done for us. I have a feeling they might. So next video will be coming really soon. Hopefully it won't be as boring as this one and hopefully the groups will be tighter. But yeah, that's all I got for today. So I'll see you guys next time.